Good morning, new calf. Good morning. Hey, good morning, number one. How are you doing today? Hey, good morning, guys. Are you hungry? Yeah. Oh, looks like we have a set of twins. One there. One there. Well, that's good. They're both alive and healthy. Okay, uh, as you can see, I got the tractor out here in the shed. And so I'm gonna get this hood put back on. And I don't know, the pony engine, I guess it ain't really running like it's supposed to. Um, it's not firing. Let's see. It's one, two, three, four. It's not firing on cylinder number four, this one, and cylinder number one, I think. The one on there said that it's not firing. I don't know why there must be something wrong with the coils on here. I've tried adjusting the gap on the uh, on the um, points on here and it just I don't know I think I'm gonna this I don't know I think part of the problem could be because originally there's supposed to be a resistor that goes between the juice going down to the coils and the switch so I'm gonna have to probably get that resistor. And I don't know if the coils are burnt out on one side or and it's, that's why it's not firing on one side. But it's just it's just simple plain and simple. It's not firing on two of the cylinders and that's what the problem is. So I think I'm gonna have to um I might have to get a new um because I just got that last year. I might have to get a new you know, unless they, they were defective or something, but I might have to get a new uh some new uh, coils for this thing so but you could get it started but it's just kind of just barely so I'm not I, I admit I'm not an expert on the ignition system on these pony motors I'm not an expert on it um, but I'm gonna have to look in the book I got an original you know original John Deere service manual they give a little more details in that book so I might have to look under that but anyway so it will run to get by for now and uh yeah and an update too on that cow well i guess she ended up passing away from the her her uterus being pushed out or prolapsed um it wasn't something that was it's very rare in a holstein cow that they ever pushed their uterus i mean it's it's very rare Matter of fact, in all the years I've been farming, I think I've only seen it happen. This is the third time we've had it ever happen on our farm in, in my lifetime that I that I remember. So usually like in beef cattle, it's more prevalent to happen, or stock cows, than it is Holstein. So it's usually pretty rare. But the fact that she, this is probably what her third, fourth lactation, she had twins. She was low on calcium, which we gave her calcium. 
I gave her orally and we IV'd some calcium into her and she still did it. And uh, either one of the two things happened. The, the, the vet, we talked to the vet, the vet said, he didn't even, we called him before he even got here, but he said it could be a blood vessel that sometimes will cause him to produce a toxin or could have just been a shock to her system. She could have just had a heart attack and died. It's one of those things, it's really, not something you want to have happen, but it happens, and it's, um, but you know, there's nothing that we could have done any differently. I don't think that would have, would have saved her, but she just, she passed away, so. So anyways, I better get that hood on and stop yammering on here. Okay, I got the hood on. I just started back up again. And that's the trial of the pony engine out again. And now all of a sudden the pony engine seems like it's running fine. So I don't know what the deal is with it. Just like all of a sudden it starts hitting on all of them. And then there's got to be something else going on here. Why this thing ain't hitting. I don't know if anybody knows what could be going on. Feel free to tell me down in the comment section. But anyways, I guess we're not going to put this on the feeder wagon here today. Um, the reason, one of the reasons why is we were going to haul, we had some crappy haylage that we had to haul out that was out there by the egg bags and we were going to use two spreaders. Well, my brother, Pat and Steve were going to use two spreaders, but I guess they never didn't use two spreaders. So, um, we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave the 4020 on the feeder wagon for now. So, but... For the most part, it's ready to go if I could figure out that anomaly with the pony engine. And my brother, he's out there right now with the 8670 striking out of land out in the hay field so we get the center of the field figured out or the get a straight line so when we start plowing, we got the stuff, that thing for the plow. So in a little bit, we're going to go finish up the plow and probably go out and start plowing. Hopefully, if nothing else goes wrong. <laughs> Oh, this guy back here is a little bit on the weak side. Ah. That one works, but this one I can tell is a little bit weak. Okay, we're going to get uh, these last seven bags loaded up on the spreader over there. and. This has to get spread in the field that we have that's 12 miles from the farm, so well, that's what we're gonna do here. And my brother, he got plowing out there. My youngest brother, Pat, he's out. He took over so we can do this job. I still gotta finish feeding and work on the corn planter yet.
Well, there. Got some footage of plowing here. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Turn it in all this manure that we spread down over the, the winter and the green. This has got nitrogen, the manure's got nitrogen, and the night and the alfalfa roots. The alfalfa's been putting nitrogen in to the soil, and uh, yeah, this should uh, we got nitrogen in here and uh, your rocks here and there. So, uh, yeah, this should do good. But when you see the roots sticking up in the air like this, you know upside down like that you know you got the alfalfa killed that's why we like to plow our alfalfa at least the only way I know how to kill a alfalfa organically on an organic farm is to you know plow it under like that but so uh, yeah you could uh, see about how tall the alfalfa is so that's what we like to do Anyways, I better get back to the feeding here and uh, finish that up. So I thought I'd just come out here and get a clip of that for you. Don't worry, there'll be more clips of it. So, <laughs> to be honest with you, I haven't even done any field work this year. I've just been busy fixing things. Fixing! So, oh well, we're making use of my brother Pat. Why he is unemployed because of the coronavirus anyways. Okay, uh, that was my, my cousin's boy that he came over here they uh came over here to borrow our stock trailer stock trailer so because they need it to haul haul some cattle with so anyways um i gotta work on this corn planter here but i'm gonna show you here what i need to do here to it so uh, they got these little pin things here uh, let me get them all open up here for you Come on, get out of there. Oh, I didn't even get it open. Okay. Yeah, these little things here, these little dogs, clutch dog things as they call them, I think. So, so anyways, I uh, found out what the problem is. It was, well, yeah, I think I explained it. Yeah, these bolts got wear in there and it was hitting up against that thing there. I took that one off and I'm gonna show you the one in the shed here. So, yeah, and you could, this is the, the, cil the, the cylinder lock. And so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna take and cut this thing all off, just get rid of it. Either I need to grind it down and thin it down or just take it off completely. But I just think I'm just gonna take and cut the whole thing off. I got a, um, I got a special cutting blade on the grinder here, so that's what I'm gonna do and cut that off. So, <sighs> I need to get done with the planter because we're gonna start planting corn, but at least I got my tractor done, my brother's in here. If you don't know, if you're new to the channel, what's, what's you're wondering what's wrong with this thing, it's got a blown head gasket on it. And uh, you know, I got a question, I mean, when I'm thinking of it, <laughs> I, I don't even think this stuff would work, but I bought it for something else. Oh, let's see, where is it? I've got it in here someplace, or I did have it in here. I don't know what I did with it. What did I do with that crap? Ah, oh, dang it. I was going to show you guys that stuff I had a question about. Ah, oh, where did it go? I don't even know where I put the darn stuff now. Dang it. Ah. I don't know. It, oh, here it is. No, that's not it either. Ah. 
I can't, I'm oh, sorry, I can't find the stuff I'm looking. And I want to show you guys. I don't know where it went off to. Anyway, there's some stuff that you could get, and it's supposed to seal up your head gasket. I don't know if anybody's ever used this stuff, but I can't imagine working it, that stuff working on a diesel. You're supposed to pour it in your radiator, and it's supposed to seal up your head gasket. You've got a hole in it, but I just don't see, we'll see that would work on a diesel. The compression's too high. I just can't imagine it working. But anyway, I better get working on a planner and. Uh, Okay guys, I'm back again. Um, I uh, worked on the corn planter there for a little bit and then I uh, went up, had a bite to eat and then I had to start milking because my, my brother Pat and I got the cows and started milking because my brother Steve um, was still over there spreading fertilizer, but he's back now. And so um, I'm back working on the planter again. Of course it's dark out, but uh, I got my light over here, so I'm still trying to work on this thing here. I got that piece cut off, so that won't ever bother again. And I gotta get these clutch dogs on here. So, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna work at that. I'm gonna work at, uh, I get the light here. I'm gonna work at that for a little bit here. And uh, see what I can get down here yet. So, yeah, gotta get it done. Okay, everybody, I think I'm gonna call it quits tonight here for the uh, well, for the video and for working on this corn planter. Um, I got everything. These drive clutch things are done. Finally got them right. Sometimes these clutch dogs are kind of confusing which way they have to go. I had to take them back off again and redo it because I got put it on the wrong way when I looked at the other one. But it shouldn't uh, bother. I got those lock up things cut off now so they won't ever hit those things again and shear off. So the only thing left to do is to solder that wire tomorrow and just take all the boxes off, make sure all the seed tubes are clean, and run a brush down there just to make sure the sensors, you know, check all the sensors, make sure they all work, get the monitor hooked up. Probably just take it out in the field, maybe just run it too and make sure that. Set it down, make sure everything's turning okay. Um, but yeah, so we'll probably do that. About working that tomorrow. Oh, let me get this bright light out of my ah there. So, uh, oh, been a long day. So I'll probably keep plowing tomorrow. Maybe we'll get that one field plowed tomorrow. So we got to plow it, disc it, plant it. And then uh, we got one small other field. It's like a two acre, two or three acre field. We got a, a, a another small two acre field, field that we got to plant the corn here. And then we got to go over to the other field, 12 miles. We got to plow that. And uh, there's like, what, 20, about 20 acres. Maybe we got to plow over there. So it ain't quite so bad. So. Anyway, it's been a long day, kind of a bummed out day because of that cow dying from that uh, prolapsed uterus or pushed out uterus. I'm just kind of bummed out about it, but sometimes you can't always control the outcome of everything. You can sure try, but it doesn't mean that it's going to work the way you want it. Things are going to go the way you want it to, and sometimes animals just do things I mean the only thing if we probably had known she might push out a uterus I guess if we would have had the stuff here to do it we could have sewed up her her birthing hole back there could have sewed it up so she couldn't push her uterus out that'd be the only other thing we could have done if we would have had it we don't have a needle here I think one of my cousins has one 
to do that, but I don't know. It's so rare that it ever happens. It's just, it's really rare. But, I mean, it just, like that, you had it pushed out and... Uh, I'm so bummed out, about it, bummed out about it. It's not fun when you lose a cow like that. Not fun. But twins are never easy on a cow or a fresh hamper. I matter of fact, I just don't like it when cows have twins, period. I just hate it when they have twins. It just spells more, double the trouble. But anyways, I gotta go. So, um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll be planting corn. And stay tuned for videos of more plowing and planting corn soon. So, have a good evening. Take care. And please don't forget to check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Organic Dairyman. And please don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. So... I'll catch you later.